Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 81 of Swimsuit by James Patterson and Maxine P. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest you click off the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 81. Henry came back to the trailer with sandwiches and, bottle, and a bottle of wine. After he unlocked the uncorked the bottle, I asked him, how does your arrangement with the peepers work? They call themselves the Alliance, Henry said. He poured out two glasses, handed one to me. I called them the peepers once and was given a lesson. No work, no pay. He put on a mock German accent. You are a bad boy, Henry. Don't trifle with us. So the Alliance is German. One of the members is German. Horst Warner. That name is probably an alias. I never checked. Another one of the peepers... John Van Du Hoover is Dutch. Listen, that could be an alias too. It goes without saying you'll change all the names for the book, right, Ben? But these people are not so stupid as to leave their own breadcrumbs. Of course, I understand. He nodded, then went on. His agitation was gone, but his voice was harder now. I couldn't find a crack in it. There are several others in the alliance. I don't know who they are. They live in cyberspace. Well, one I know very well, Gina Parazzi. She recruited me. That sounds interesting. You were recruited? Tell me about Gina. Henry sipped on it at his wine, then began to tell me about meeting a beautiful woman after his four years in the Iraqi prison. I was having lunch in a sidewalk bistro in Paris when I noticed this tall, slender, extraordinary woman at a nearby table. She had very white skin and her sunglasses were pushed up into her thick brown hair. She had high breasts and long legs and three diamond watches on one wrist. She looked rich and refined and impossibly inaccessible, and I wanted her. She put money down for the check and stood up to leave. I wanted to talk to her, and all I could do think to say was, do you have the time? She gave me a long, slow look from my eyes down to my shoes and back up again. My clothes were cheap. I had been out of prison for only a few weeks. The cuts and bruises had healed, but I still had gaunt. The torture of the things I've seen the after images were still in my eyes, but she recognized something in me. This woman, this angel whose name I did not know yet, said, I have Paris time, New York time, Shanghai time. I also have time for you. Henry's voice was softened now as he talked about Gina Parazzi. It was as if he'd finally tasted fulfillment after a lifetime of deprivation. He said that they've spent a week in Paris. Henry still visited every September. He described walking with her through the place Vendome shopping with her there he said that Gina paid for everything bought him expensive gifts and clothing so she came from very old money Henry told me she had connections to a world of wealth I knew nothing about after their week in Paris Henry told me they cruised the Mediterranean on Gina's yacht he called up images of the Côte d'Arzou, one of the most beautiful spots in the world, he said. He call, recalled the lovemaking in her cabin, the swell of the waves, the wine, the exquisite meals, and restaurants with high views of the Mediterranean. I had 1958 Glengarock whiskey at $2,600 a bottle, and there, and here's a meal I'll never forget, sea urchin ravioli followed by rabbit with fit with fennel, mascarpone, and lemon, nice fare for a country boy, and Exal quail pal. I'm a steak and potatoes man myself. Henry laughed, said, You must just haven't had a real gastronomic tour of the med. I could teach you. I could take you to a pastry shop in Paris. Ah, chocolate. You would never be the same, Ben. But I was talking about Gina, a woman with refined appetites. One day, a new guy appeared at our table, the Dutchman, John Van de Heuvel. Henry's face tightened as he talked about Van de Heuvel, how he had joined them in their hotel room, called out stage directions from his chair in the corner as Henry made love to Gina. I didn't like this guy or this routine, but a couple of months before, I'd been sleeping in my own shit eating bugs. So what wouldn't I do to be with Gina, Janet? Jan Van Duvel or not, Henry's voice was drowned out by the roar of a helicopter flying over the valley. He warned me with his eyes not to move from my chair. Even after the silence of the desert returned, it was several moments before he continued his story about Gina. That is the end of this chapter. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.